Ooh. Welcome to a live edition of the Gangs All Here podcast. We are coming live from House of Q at the American Dream Mall. This episode of Gangs All Here is presented by your Tri-State Cadillac dealers. Give it up for Cadillac. Cadillac. Visit your Cadillac showroom today. Go buy a Cadillac. Jake Brown is here, and I have a special guest alongside with me. We'll get into the Jets game. Yes, it was ugly, but Zach Wilson, <laughs> help is, in the Mrs. Doubtfire voice, yes. help is on the way. <laughs> My special guest alongside me here at House of Q is arguably the greatest fullback in the history of the NFL. According to Wikipedia. Uh, according, uh, to according to Wikipedia, to Wikipedia <laughs> according to the internet, wherever you want to get a Reddit, maybe, another website. He ended his career with the Jets. He is, how many Pro Bowls did he make? Three-time Three. yep. Pro Bowler. He's in the Chiefs Hall of Fame, the NFL 2000's All-Decade Team. He blocked for 1,000-yard rushers in nine straight seasons, including the likes of Adrian Peterson, Priest Holm, Larry Johnson, and one of our favorites, Thomas Jones. Let's welcome to the stage, Tony Richardson! Hey! Thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here today. It's a, it's a sad day because my Jets didn't win, but I'm so happy to be here. We got Claudio right here. He's, we got a Gotham City in the building. Gotham the building. City crew Gotham in the building. Shout the out building. to Gotham, Gotham City. Yep. We're glad to have you, Tony. And, you know, the Jets have been difficult to watch. Today was a rough one. They lose 27 to 12 to the Bengals. They fall to one and two. Some would say they gave us a great two minutes. That's like an aspect of many layers of life. Sometimes the best two minutes of your life uh, come in certain places, hey, whether hey, it's listen. at the football game, in the bedroom, wherever it may be. I, say, I got a good two minutes. I got a good two minute game. It could it's be strong. <laughs> good two minutes. And that's what we got last week in Cleveland. We yep, got the yep. greatest two minute miracle yep. in Cleveland today, Tony. Just the offense sucked. Let's be real. It was the kicker game. And anytime it's a Greg Zerline game, you're in trouble. Joe Flacco was bad. No. This was an ugly one today. Well, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, and I think a lot of people discount the fact that this was a team that actually represented the AFC in the Super Bowl last year. So they're a good football team. And the two games they lost previously were they lost in the, on the last play of the game. Obviously, they've had some offensive line woes, um, but also understanding, like, they're a pretty good football team. But one thing about it, when you play a team that has those type of skill players, you can't turn the football over. you got to protect your quarterback. And you got to play good defense, and we did none of those today, and that's the reason why we ended up on the short end of the stick. Joe Flacco is tough to watch. He had, again, the great two minutes. Today, 28 for 52, zero touchdowns, two interceptions, two fumbles. You can't win when your quarterback turns it over four times, T-Rich. You, you just can't win. But you know what's so funny that you say that because Joe Flacco's was not brought here to be the starting quarterback. He was brought here to be a backup quarterback for a quarterback that got drafted and was second pick overall. So all of a sudden, it's like everyone wants him to be like, no, he's had his time. He's a Super Bowl MVP. He took the, the Ravens to the Super Bowl. He won the Super Bowl. Joe Flacco is the guy who was supposed to be a mentor to Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson, unfortunately, got hurt. Uh, maybe should have ran out of bounds. We don't need to bring that up. But there's not, he's, not, he's not our starting quarterback. He's a backup quarterback that is supposed to be to mentor a young quarterback. So if you try to judge him, like, I mean, he's, I'm 40. I think he's what? No, I'm 50. I think he's what, 40? You're 40. 50? Yeah, I'm 50. Yeah, I'm 50. Black don't yeah. crack, Black man. Does not That's crack. unbelievable. Black, yeah, I, was, I, I forgot how old I am. So I'm 50. And how's Joe Flacco? He's like 40. Joe Flacco's 37. 37. He moves like he's 50. Yeah. So, uh, he's but, you know, immobile. He's hard to watch when he gets outside the pocket and, like, he had the fumbles today. And the offensive line, and you know this as a guy who blocked as a yeah. fullback, when your offensive line gives you zero time, you're yeah. in trouble, especially when you're immobile. At least when Zach Wilson comes back, he can go outside the pocket, run with the football. When Joe Flacco runs with the football, the world slows down and life slows down. Well, let me think about this. So obviously uh, the game we were anticipating this afternoon or whenever the, the fans actually watch this show, uh, Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers. Tom Brady has made his uh, money on being immobile, but you know, understanding like if your offensive line can protect you, you have good skill people around you, and you can get the ball out of your hand, you can be successful. So I'm not expecting Joe Flacco's not Michael Vick. He's not Zach Wilson. He's not Lamar Jackson. He is a quarterback that can stand in the pocket. If everything's clean, he can make the plays. If you're asking him to move left or right or bring the pocket on him, it's not going to happen. And that's so my thing right now, they're asking Flacco to do things that. It's, it, I mean, it's almost like asking me to go do neuroscience. I'm not a neuroscientist. I was a football player who had a degree in finance. That's not my world. But the thing about it is everyone's down on Flacco. He was 
brought here to develop a young quarterback and be a mentor to him, and you ask him to do too much right now. He wasn't brought here to defeat the defending AFC champion <laughs> Bengals, exactly. I'll tell you that, but he gave us hope that he could keep the Jets alive this yeah. week with what we saw last week. But let's be and honest. that's all you do. But As a backup quarterback, you, your job is one game. You're not – because most of the time, a backup quarterback is uh, – it's, uh, it's, like, uh, it's like putting, like, glue on something, you know, like uh, – on, uh, put some kind of tape on something you know it's going to last for a certain point of time and that's the biggest thing he's only there supposed to be a stopgate for like but maybe, T. Rich here's the problem yeah. Robert Sala talks to him like he's Joe Cool like of we course. love him and I know that's how your coach is supposed to speak but the hype he's been getting my you know usual co-host uh, Brian Casella wrote yeah. if Joe Flacco stays hot you start him in Pittsburgh okay. now if you were to say that yep. you would be smoking yep. some sort of drug beyond weed if you were to say okay. start Joe Flacco well let me say this Save us, Zach where, where do we live right now so right now we're in New Jersey we live in New York so that's those are hot takes so right now Salah has to you have to build your quarterback up because we're in New York City if we were in uh, say Cleveland or somewhere else, they would give you time. If you're in Kansas City, and I tell people all the time, all the time, when I when we won the AFC Championship, when we went to the AFC Championship game, there was more media in our locker room than I ever seen. I think in my entire life, mm -hmm. because it's just the magnitude of. And so Salah, like, he can't go and and not praise him because if you say, oh, you know, he's going to be a New York media is not going to allow that. So you have to. He has to build up bravado, and that's, I think, what got Rex in trouble. And that's just kind of where we are right now. So you, that's, we're in New York. And for a week, he kept the keeping receipts line working. Yeah. It worked last week. They <laughs> came back. Yeah. They had that miracle. The receipts were keeping them again. <laughs> we, you know, we threw them out for a week. Please, we're we're back. We're taking do every receipt. Do we're expensing, you yeah. know, I'm expensing yeah. my Uber yeah. here through yeah. work. We're expensing our Ubers. We're doing yeah. everything. We're keeping them because this team played like crap today. And stupid penalties like Corey Davis, when the team is in the red zone, down 27-12. All right, you're in the red zone. Finally, let's score this touchdown. He has an unnecessary roughness in the end, end zone that makes it third and yeah. super long and sets up a fourth and six, and they don't get it. You can't have that. That's undisciplined football. Yeah. That's Buzz Killington. The team was about to score and make it a one-possession game. And listen, when you're a guy like Corey Davis, T. Rich, who's already been talked about on the trading block, oh, sure. you can't make a mental mistake like that. You just can't. Yeah, you know the thing about it? That's a team that's not used to winning. Because the thing about it, I was just telling uh, Wayne, I know uh, Kerbet's about to come on. It's like, if you're a Patriot and you make those type of uh, mistakes, you're going to get called out. And that's the worst thing. Like, like I, can, I don't care what the fans say. I don't care what the media says. But if you turn on that film and the film doesn't lie, you get called out in front of all your peers and Belichick calls you to the carpet and you realize the reason we lost the game is because of you. Right now, they don't, there's not a culture of winning. If you're winning, you're not making those stupid mistakes because you know what the thing about it? The head coach wouldn't do that. If you're in the uh, Patriots locker room, you got Mike Vrabel, you got Teddy Bruschi, you got, uh, you got all these guys, you got Tom Brady, they're calling you out. And that's the reason why when you build a, a, a culture of winning, you don't make those stupid mistakes because, they call, I mean, we all, we all put on the pads. You don't have to be a superhero. Make the play and don't do that. And, you know, another mistake, and listen, this is a ticky-tack call, but in the first yeah. quarter, John Franklin Myers on third and nine gets called for a penalty, hitting Burrow yeah. late. Barely pushed him. It was very much like a baby call. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't love that call. But, again, JFM did the same thing last year on a big crucial yeah. play. Joe Burrow is going to capitalize. See, that, that would have been a turn. It would have been fourth down. They punted. The Jets get it back. It leads to a 56-yard touchdown and the quarter on the final play of the quarter. Another play by a guy who got a big money extension last year, John Franklin Myers. Yeah. And while it was a ticky-tack call, don't push him. Let him get out of bounds. He yeah. wasn't going to complete that pass. And those two penalties, that's the difference between another touchdown and maybe the Jets winning this football well, game. You well, know you know what that is. It's like that's when you just call it. It's pressing. Because all of a sudden when you're losing, you're not winning, you haven't built a culture of winning, you try to do extra. So my thing is, and one thing you always say, do your job. Don't, don't try to be, if you're the weak side linebacker, try to get over and cover, you know, all those kind of things. And so sometimes now you try to do extra because you feel like I need to do this to help the team win. Until you build a culture of winning, that, those stupid penalties happen. You're on the field, say, for the Corey Davis play. Yeah. You were fullback. You're in the offense. Yep. You see him do that in the end zone, commit that penalty to hurt your team. Yep. Take me what's going through your mind in that situation as a guy that's playing alongside well, him. Well, that's, that's the biggest thing. So, like, uh, the years I were here, I, didn't, I wouldn't have had to say anything because we had guys like Thomas Jones. We had guys like DeBrickishaw Ferguson. We had guys like Damian Woody. We had Alan Fanica. There was so much leadership in the locker room that we would look at each other like, 
Like, we just didn't make those stupid penalties. Do you penalties. pull him to the side? Do you say something to him? Who do you lead that to to talk to Corey Davis? Well, Bar Scott would have probably did it because Bar, okay. Bar's still talking right now. He's never shut up. He still keep talking, and that's why he's making he's a He's been loop. keeping receipts <laughs> for years. And that's why he's still making a lot of money on all the, all the uh, radio broadcasts. But no, nah, when you um, – you just it's, – it's one of those things. It's like when you have a culture of veterans – and understand that if you do something to call, because at the end of the day, like your coaches can say whatever, but if you let your teammates down, that's the thing that hurts because that's the thing that you don't want to have. And I probably wouldn't have had to say anything because I was never a guy that would get in someone's face. But they also knew like if T-Rich says something, like because they know I used to break people's face masks and I broke a few people's necks. So they knew like, they knew that don't push those buttons. I would just look at you like, dude, what are you doing? That's all I had to say. And they knew like, you know, you can't do stuff like that. The other blow up that we saw in this game and, you know, if you were at the game, you might have not saw, but if you were looking on TV, Quinn and Williams yelling at, uh, I believe, the defensive line coach in this game of the Jets, yeah. Aaron White Cotton. Yeah. What a what a name that is. <laughs> Aaron White Cotton. Quinn and Williams had to get held back, and I'm sure you've seen that on the sidelines. Yep. As And I'm sure you have, – have you blown up on your offensive coordinator or offensive no. coach? Well, you know, it's funny, and I, I'll share this, and I know that uh, Eric bien me will testi testify to this, like – you know, EB was uh, he was my running back coach when I was in Minnesota, and now he's the offensive coordinator with the Chiefs and should be a head coach here pretty soon. And I had just came to the Vikings, and EB, you know, he's been known to kind of be a high head and whatever, whatever. So he he uh, he got a call from downstairs and said I missed the block, and I'm like, and he came at me crazy, and I went at him, and I was like, and then once he looked at the tape, he I mean, once he looked at the picture, he was like, I apologize. Mm -hmm. But all the other running backs like Tra uh, Chester Taylor. Uh, Miguel De Moore, they were like, oh, shoot, because they never seen me like that. They always said, like, we hate guys like you because, like, I'm the guy that's going to pray with you, but I'm also the guy that will fight you and body slam you because if, if I get that dark cloud over me, it's not good. And so me and EB had a battle, but after that game, he said, I apologize. I respect you because if you don't, if you don't. If Here's you don't, the blow up. Yeah, yeah I, see, I mean, I've, I've been a part of it. I've only had to blow up on one coach, and that was Eric being me, and we've never, ever had a disagreement ever again because that's, I mean, because we're all men. You're trying to compete. You all get paid a high salary, and you want to win. But that kind of stuff there, you need to take care of that in the locker room. And listen, Quentin Williams needs to be better. You well, can't be cursing I mean, at your coach's well, face. Well, think like. about that. Quinn, he's, a, he's a guy at Alabama, used to winning at a high level. He's a high first-round pick, making way more money than the head coach. I think Quinn's making, what, $20-something million this year? Don't, don't do that because now you put that coach in a bad situation because mm -hmm. the coach starts yelling back. Who you think they going, they going, are they going to fire the, the player or the coach? They're going to fire the coach. That's, mm -hmm. they don't, don't do that kind of stuff. Handle it, handle it behind, behind closed doors. Yeah, that was unfortunate yeah. to see. But we were at House of Q at American yeah. Dream. Jake Brown, Tony Richardson, Gangs All Here podcast, New York Post, presented by Tri-State Cadillac Dealers. The Jets fall to one and two as they lose to the Bengals today. And they showed us that they missed Dwayne Brown. Man, at left tackle, you know, that is one of the most underrated and important positions on a football field. And that offensive line sucked. They need Dwayne Brown. We know they need the quarterback, you, you but they say, need your left tackle. You can't say that's the underrated position. That's the, that's the highest paid position. On the I know, line. but we don't talk. We're not like, well, oh, listen, I, we I got play, the best left tackle. No, I play, I we play don't really rough. I mean, all my left tackles were the Brickenshaw Ferguson. Those are those are those. Guys. That's, but a that's fan a guy. isn't thinking we got an elite left tackle. But <laughs> that is an important. But you, you no, know, financially it is. You but know it who is likes the left tackles? All the little hot blondes, they like the left tackle is making fifty million dollars a year, and I'm no. like, how how's this dude six hundred pounds in his? And they eating like, good. Yeah, eating very good. <laughs> so all the girls like the left tackles because they know that's what the salary. That's gonna like. be a shirt. The babes dig the uh, long ball. The babes dig oh, the left tackle. So that's I didn't know apparently the show was X-rated. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's PG thirteen. Yeah, we won't go yeah, too yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. Here's a good thing. A couple good things. Cause I don't want to make this all negative. One Garrett Wilson got hurt and came right back in yep. in the next quarter. This guy's going to be a star. And you saw the offense, how stagnant they were when he was out of the game. Yep. He gets off the field, goes to the locker room, comes back in. And this is the second straight week. I thought he was done for the season <laughs> and came back the <laughs> yeah. next quarter. Yeah. That's a good sign to see from a rookie that he wants to be out there. He's hurt. He could have said, you know, I can't go back in this yeah, game. Yeah. He wants to help his team win back-to-back -back weeks. And when this guy's out there, He's explosive. And Zach Wilson, Garrett Wilson, next Sunday, we'll get into it in a bit. We finally get to see the volleyball special. Wilson to Wilson. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm that's, excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait. And it's funny. I played with Dale Carter. And Dale Carter would get hurt. He would lay down like he was dead and then jump up and start running full speed. So hopefully that, you know, that's, that's great, though. That's he's like special, a, yeah, 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 he's definitely he's special. special. He's special. That, he's special. That move, like, get his off. first step. Oh, serious. Oh, yeah. You can't, you, you can't, you can't coach that. I'm excited for him, the yeah. Wilson to Wilson connection. So that's one positive. The other, 
Sauce Gardner is proving he is already a number one quarterback in this league. Yeah. I mean, the way he contained Jamar Chase, Chase off the bat, T. Higgins was just going off. And he was in his face. Like, you, he was barking at him all night long. But Jamar Chase, six catches, 29 yards. I know he had the one five-yard touchdown. Yeah. But six for 29 for the number one receiver. You will sign up any day of the week. Sauce Gardner is going to be special in this yeah. league. Yeah. The Jets look like they got, you know, Joe Douglas – Something about us bald guys. We just were smart. We're beautiful. We're big. He got it right with Wilson and with Sauce Gardner in this draft yeah. in the first round. Yeah, it's funny. I was actually at the draft, and uh, and it was crazy. I mean, we knew Sauce was going to get drafted, but I got a chance to meet him uh, as right when he was about to get on a private plane to fly back to New York. And what the thing about it, when I stood next to him, like, okay, I'm 6'1". He's legit 6'2", maybe 6'3", long arms, but he has a swag. And that's the thing about it. As a defensive back, you have to have the swag because – I mean, you're gonna get. You're probably gonna get beat more than you actually, you know, shut people down. He hasn't been beat yet, but uh, yeah, I like the swag about him, and we did we we did right by them. Well, speaking of swag, we have a oh. special guest coming hey, over Wayne here. Wayne has nothing but swag. We'll give him a minute. Yeah, he he signed a few swag. autographs, <laughs> but you know, we talk about quarterbacks before we bring in our special guest. You know, the Savior's here, yeah. and you know, I didn't mind Joe Flacco. I thought he could win them a couple games. Yeah. He won them one. But now you go to Pittsburgh and you face Mike Tomlin and a guy who's getting headaches watching Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah. Zach Wilson will be back, and this is a winnable game. And I think it's big that Zach Wilson will be 100% and so be I, good. Hopefully he is. Hopefully no, I gotta, he's good. I gotta, so they can win this football no, game. No, I understand that, but everyone keeps saying like a winnable game. Like, do you understand? It's Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh Steelers has built a mantra. Like, Mike Tomlin has never, ever had a losing season. I mean, granted, they're, they're missing their, their star pass, pass rusher. It is so difficult to be able to win in Pittsburgh. It's definitely a winnable game because it's 50-50 and everyone gets paid. But in the same sense, it's like, this is going to be a very, very tough football game. And I hope that the Jets aren't looking at the record and saying we could just walk in there because Pittsburgh's a different, it's a different animal. Yeah, yeah it's they, not going to be a walk in the park, no. but like, this is a winnable football game. It was a winnable game. game. It was, but... They were 0-2. Yeah, but Cincinnati was desperate for a win. And but they're a winnable game. That's, they're 0-2. And like, everyone was like, oh, the offensive line woes and everything else. And guess what? Guess what? We got, we got smacked in the mouth today. Well, one guy who's taken smacks in the mouth but gets them for first downs yeah. is Wayne Corbett. Let's welcome yeah. Wayne Corbett to the Woo. stage. Hey, one, one, one thing I have to say, and I, and, I, and I tell Wayne this every time I see him and wherever, we, we always do events together. I'm like, if you open a dictionary, you say what the epitome of a jet or the epitome of a, the toughest person you know in your life, you open the dictionary, you're going to see a picture of Wayne Corbett. I tell him this all the time. <laughs> this is the toughest guy I know. He's, I, I love him to death, and like I'm so happy. Every time I get a chance to spend time with Wayne, it's, it makes my day. And we have Wayne's dad out there, too, and it's like that's, that's, that's where it all started right there. Ten years, 95 through 2005, Mr. Third Down, as a Hofstra alum class of 2013. You know I love you, Wayne. Welcome, and uh, remember the Ring of Honor, which we'll talk about Nick Mangold in a few minutes being the Ring of Honor. Welcome to Gangs All Here. Wayne, how you doing? Oh, great. Appreciate you having me, man. Hey, t class of 2013. Yeah, well, yeah, what are you, class of 94 or 5? 95. Yeah. 95. Yeah. That's terrible. We, we got Delicious. shoes older than you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> some people might think we're the same age. I'm not aging that gracefully. As a bald guy, we don't age as well. Um, T-Rich, you're 50. You're aging well. Why do you got to tell, why do you got to tell everybody my age? You're the one who said you're 50, I 50. and I said black no, don't crack. I'll be 51 in December. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, almost, I'm, I'm half a, yeah, over a century. That's impressive. Yeah. Well, Wayne, welcome. Um... Ring of Honor, how special is that? We'll talk about Nick Mango, but when you get in the Ring of Honor, like, tell us about your prep for your speech and the moment and everything that's going through your mind. Yeah, kind of surreal. Uh, you know, I didn't know how I was going to feel. Try not to get emotional, but, you know, you, you can't hold it in because you're so happy and so proud of everybody that helped you get there, teammates, your fans, and obviously your family. As soon as you mention your family, it kind of like gets to your get voice cracks up. a little bit. But yeah, I mean, to be up there in the box with Emerson Boozer today and Wesley Walker and Gastineau to know I'm up there with them. I mean, it's surreal. I still don't believe that it, it worked out that way, but it's, it's, I'm humbled by it. T. Rich, uh, you played with Nick Mangold. We just had him on the podcast the yeah. other day. Fantastic interview. Been very good in retirement speaking. Yeah, yeah. Everyone loves the beard. He told us he was going to chug a beer in the third quarter. He took a swig. I wouldn't call it a chug. <laughs> yeah. He took a swig of Bud Light after uh, his speech. Not the best Nick Mangold chugging, but you got to play with him. What was he like as a player? Yeah, and, and Wayne can attest to this. Like, uh, the center is 
pretty much the quarterback. He's because for me as a you know Wayne's you know as soon as we break the huddle, Wayne goes out. He's gonna run. He's running routes to do all his things. But as a fullback, like the 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 center is the guy who keeps all the offensive linemen together, and he also has to bring that continuity because as much as you think everyone likes each other, everyone don't like each other. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, Nick had a way about him. I mean, you see, he had his hat backwards today. He had the beard. Everyone loved Nick, and the thing about it was like everyone. Um, he kept. The offensive line together. He made my job so much easier. He was super smart. He was loyal. Like, I mean, the thing about it, and and Wayne can attest to this. Like, he had opportunities to go somewhere else. He could have easily signed another contract to go to another team. Maybe less money. Maybe more money. He's loyal to the Jets, and that's the thing that you love. And like, just like Wayne, it's like, like once a Jet, always a Jet. And so to be able to celebrate that with him today is it means everything. Was that Kevin Wai similar to Nick Mangold in that aspect with you guys? Yeah, just the leader, you know, up front. You know, they control everything. It's kind of like the relationship between a pitcher and a catcher. Yeah. It's such a, such a bond they always have. Uh, and, yeah, he deserved it, well-deserved today. You know, I think he'll be in the Hall of Fame someday. But uh, you see what he, you know, he wears his hat backwards. He's got the beard. <laughs> yeah. He's not trying to be somebody, you know, he's not. He's not out there in, like, suit and tie. That's not him, and that's why the fans appreciate him because he's genuine. Uh, he worked hard, and he appreciated the fans. And he embraced New York, and we talked about this about him. This is an Ohio guy. He tells us he lands in LaGuardia. He's like, Where the, where's the tall buildings? Where am I? <laughs> Me and him debate. I'm an historian in Queens. He debates Queens as part of Long Island. I will fight that it's not. I guess on a map it looks like What do you like mean? It. I live in Long Island City. What are you talking about? Oh, we're neighbors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, yeah, you're yeah. next door. But yeah. uh, he said to make fun of you because you think Long Island City is oh. part of the city. It's not Manhattan. Oh, my God. I'm Did like, he it's tell still you part of it. Yeah. No, no. So, hey, Wayne, we check fight this about out. that. No, this is funny. So um, when I first came to the Jets, you know, we, we were still up in Hofstra. So uh, I wanted to live in Manhattan. I was like, you know what? This is my, I think it was my 15th year. I'm like, I'm mature enough. The organization said, no, no, no. No players in Manhattan. So my real estate agent. Oh, the Jets said no oh, to no, Manhattan. no, nobody. Only I didn't know that. that lived, only person that lived in Manhattan was uh, Eric Barton. And then, you know, once the guys got, got big money, like uh, Brandon Marshall, who lived in Soho. But the, they frowned upon guys living in Manhattan. Really? So my real estate agent said, well, what about Long Island City? And I was like, well, that's still Long Island, right? So I came down. <laughs> I saw these big, beautiful buildings. I'm like, I'm in. So, Did you not look at a map when you no, plan no, no. your move? No, so all of a sudden, I'm like, now we move to Florham Park. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I got to get up at 5 in the morning. Oh, my but no, God. But every time I would tell Nick, I'm like, dude, he's like, he's like, dude, you live in Long Island. I said, dude, I'm in Manhattan. I said, dude, it takes me five minutes. So that's why he would always give me a hard time because I'm like, dude, I look at my rooftop. I'm looking into Manhattan. So to this day, he still says that uh, Long Island City is not Manhattan. There is a miss. Not, it's not Manhattan. But it's close. There's a misconception among people not from here that Queens is far from Manhattan. It's literally right there. Dude, I mean, five, we're next door. Five minutes, I'm in Grand Central. I, and in eight minutes, I'm in the NFL office on Park Avenue. I can't eight stand for the Hoboken's eight. the city, too. Whoa. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You can't get to Hoboken. You just kidding? saying. It's a pat train, five minutes. No, that's not five minutes. That's 20 minutes, no, huh? man. Come on, man. No. Hoboken's a little <laughs> yeah, further. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a different that's a we, hawk, we hawk that, in Jersey dude, City? Yeah, come on. Well, we hawk is close, but that's still a different state. You're paying different taxes. You know, for a while. Oh, weed yeah. was only legal there, not yeah, here. Yeah. Now yeah, that's now changed. Weed's illegal Gambling was yeah. only legal there, now it's legal <laughs> here. Right. Yeah, that's a boat. Boat. Yeah, that's But boat. see, you're a Jersey guy, yeah. Wayne. And through through. New York yeah, embraced yeah, yeah. you, but you were from here. What was that relationship like with you and the fan base? Yeah, you know what everybody says. You still live on the island. So people think I'm from Long Island because I went to Hofstra there and all that stuff. But yeah, I've been a Jersey guy my whole life. Grew up 15 minutes from here. So I was the local guy my whole career, and I think people appreciated that someone like me came from a blue-collar uh, town, uh, and they related to me, um, you know, and I'm an approachable guy, and just people appreciated that, and, and I always try to give back to the fans and they, to this day because, you know, the legend grew as the fan base grew, and uh, like I said, I'm grateful for it. I got, I got a funny story. So actually, Wayne and I, we did an event together at the, at the facility. And Wayne was like, he's like, oh, I got to go home. I, you, that's when your son was getting off the school bus. And you were like, this is, and I was like, hey, I got to go to, uh, which is crazy because I vacuum my floors every day. I had to go to Dyson. He said, where is it? I said, Paramus. When I said Paramus, he lit up. He said, <laughs> Wayne started telling me stories about the Paramus ball, yeah. the Paramus boobies. Yeah. 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 When I'm over here talking about the Dyson vacuum cleaner, I said Paramus. He lit up. I was like, all right, here we go. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about you vacuuming every day? Uh, every day. So my, no, my, so my dad was a military. Danny Tanner? No, no, no. My dad was a military man, 32 years, Vietnam okay. veteran, Purple Heart. My sister did 28. So if you go to my closet right now, 
All my all my shirts color coordinated. I vacuum every day. I Saturday mornings I take a bucket of bleach. I take a toothbrush. I clean the uh, baseboard. Yeah, wait. Take yeah, yeah. No, yeah, oh, I was gonna say, oh, Mister Clean. No, 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 you got a little hair. I, know, I, got I can't I got rub. Gray. I, got gray. I can't rub the head. Nah, You're not so Mister Clean. When I said, uh, I said, Wayne said, "Where are you going to Dyson?" I said, "Paramus." He's like, "Oh." He started talking about the Paramus <laughs> and movie theater. Dude, and I like, grew up going there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you say Danny Tanner? Danny Tanner, rest What's in peace to uh, Full House. Oh. Bob Saget. Yeah, yeah, I was, thought you were like, talking about Tony Dens. And, no, no, no. <laughs> Did you ever watch Full House TV show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the dad. Well, rest in peace. He uh, passed away this past year. But uh, yeah. your favorite moment as a Jet, I want to hear from each of you. Wayne. I got yeah, Too many, too many oh, to think you of. You got to have has, one. He has a lot. Uh, you know what? Like, obviously, the Monday Night Miracle was special. Just mm-hmm. one of those nights that was crazy. But when we won the East... I think it was 2002. That was the game where we weren't going to make the playoffs unless all these things happened. And they happened. We were playing Green Bay, and the fans were kind of telling us the other teams drive, and they kicked the – and they put the uh, – things Miami kicking the field goal, and the place went bananas. Loudest I ever heard it. And we knew if we won, we won the East. And we won by, like, 30, won the East. It was a great feeling. But I always say one of the greatest things I have a video is my last year, what they thought would be my last year, they had my uh, – three-year-old be the t-boy oh. and he thought that you had, he had to make tea for everybody but like he didn't get it <laughs> that was like nick so yeah nick, his, yeah nick's son today was a t-boy yeah you so, yeah, 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 supposed yeah, yeah, to be yeah. like yeah. older like 10 years old and he ran out there and i was like this is pretty cool but it was a funny story <laughs> wow see rich yeah, i yeah. imagine back-to-back afc championship no no game, my, my, mine is easy because it was um it was the afc championship game well we know the patriots game so early in that year we go out Patriots kicked, they literally kicked our teeth out. We got smoked. I think it was like, they beat us like 30 something, whatever, on our Thursday night, Thursday night game. So then we go to the playoffs and no one gave us an opportunity. No one gave us a chance to win. That was a bar, that was a bar Scott can't, can't wait. wait. Yeah. That game, because that, you know, for me coming from the Chiefs, like we'd always like 13 and three, 13 and three, and we never won playoff games. And so to be able, and, you, and that's when, you know, Tom Brady was like, and that's when the Patriots were like rolling and no one gave us an opportunity. To, it literally, and Wayne attested, it's like, when you have a band of brothers from the, the waste staff who d- takes care of our food, from uh, Vito who takes care of our equipment, like it was a band of brothers and we hopped on that plane and we knew we were gonna win that football. <laughs> it's like, you know what, we say burn the boat. And Wayne attested, if you say burn the boat, it's like, we're not coming back without a victory. So right. you, if you go out to sea and we say burn the boat, we're not coming back. And that's, mm-hmm. and that's the thing that, and almost gets me emotional because it's like, you don't, people don't understand. Like when you go and you do something with some, people for so long and we went out there we were like I ain't gonna say F it but I was like we're, gonna, we're coming back with a victory and that was it. that's why Bart was so emotional because we were like bring him on because that, that was the, that's the best memory I ever had this is why I think maybe going on the road this week is good for the it's Jets because yep. you know road warriors everybody's against you you got nothing to lose and if they boot you you, you, you scr- get booed anyway yeah you get <laughs> yeah. You, sk- you scrap yep. You, yep. you know you fight and maybe yeah. that's the best place for them to be is going on the road to Pittsburgh. Is that what you think for Zach? It's good that he starts on the road. If he struggles, he won't. Because I imagine he's not going to get booze because they just saw Joe Flacco and were chanting for right. Mike White. But well, is it good for him to be on the road against a Steelers team that's one and two? Yeah. You know, like I said, it's hostile there and he's going to get booed. But at home, what if they had a three and out, a three and out? And then, they're, calling for, they're calling for Mike White. Like they, can, they yeah, couldn't they put Mike White in today. No. Because what if he did good? What if he did good, but they didn't <laughs> and win? That's what we were talking about. Yeah. We were then talking he, about then that. you'll yeah. put another can of worms. So let him come back. Hopefully, do a nice game plan, quick stuff, you know, not have him run around like crazy out there. But, yeah, I think no. it's better to go on the road. Do you see enough from these guys in the supporting cast? We were talking earlier about uh, Garrett Wilson, who looks like he could be a star yeah. receiver. Do you see the pieces around them? You know, maybe when they get Dwayne Brown back at left tackle, too, the offensive line struggled, that Zach could have some success here? Me? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, he didn't have these kind of weapons last year. You know, guys were injured. But if you look at what they have with Garrett, Elijah, Corey Davis, Braxton, and two young running backs. I mean, they have a, a bright future. I mean, for years, yeah. that could be the core. They could do some special things on offense. Yeah, and I, th- I think the biggest thing is just, as Wayne just said, it's like you have these pieces, but create a game plan to make it. Don't, don't make it hard. You don't need Zach dropping a five-step drop. Like, don't put him in that situation. You know what? You got, you got tight ends. You got to run, run some screens. The easiest play in football is 22 Z hook. Tight end over the ball, full back in the flat, uh, and a, a Z in or something like that. Just make things that are simple 
and get get them into a rhythm, and then all of a sudden you got the running game. Now things start to open up because you can't five step drops throwing bombs. At, at, once you get behind that eight ball, it's over. Here's my worry with Zach coming back with the knee injury. This guy's mobile. Are they going to call the play? Is Michael Fleur going to call a different playbook and not let him run and not have an RPO and options? I I think they're going to kind of baby him at least for no, a they, week or two. No, they can't because one thing, and that's one uh, one thing Salah says is like he has to be a hundred percent. And and Wayne in a test like and Wayne and I both were two players when they were like, oh, how do you feel? I would lie. Oh, you're 100 percent. No, I'm like, I'd probably be 60, but I'm gonna tell you I'm 100. But they got to make sure if you're the starting quarterback, especially a young franchise quarterback, you got to make sure that he's 100 percent in that knee. They're going to test that knee out all through the week. And if he's not 100 percent, they're not going to put him in bad situation because just imagine he rolls out and he blows in, in the knee injuries again. And all of a sudden we're back behind the A ball. Yeah, uh, like like you said, you got to protect them. But yeah, it's just certain plays, bang, bang, bang. Take take your pick. You can't get into third and ten, third and twelve, third and fifteen because it limits your playbook. Yeah. You got to have like you know third down a short where you can you know get the yardage and continue drives, and that helps the defense. You know you yeah. they do do a three and out defense just sat down and catch their breath and have a drink, and they're like, <laughs> we got to go back in there ready. Yeah, they just yeah. got to extend drives, get points, and give the defense a chance to uh, to play as hard as they can. Well, we got to talk about the defense because they have been underwhelming. Outside of Sauce Gardner, the safeties haven't been great. You know, they've done solid stopping the run, which we were worried about their run defense, but it's actually been solid today. 28 for 68. That's 2.4 a carry. But they're giving up big plays. I mean, they're giving up 50-yard touchdowns. They're undisciplined. The JFM penalty we talked about, you know, I'm a little worried about this defense. They're giving up too many long plays and 50. The missed tackle that led to the long touchdown today, that can't happen. It just no. can't. So that's one thing. I, and this is now me being the foot. Because you got to imagine, those guys go over on the other side of the ball, they get paid too. So whenever someone's just like, the defense, I'm like, you know what? In the perfect world, we shut everyone down. Just scored 30 points. They score zero. Those guys get paid too. Those guys are high price athletes and so everything's everything's not always going to be perfect you got to understand it's it's they're going to score we're going to score but the biggest thing you got to play and we got to play complimentary football offense defense and special teams and all of a sudden if the offense is not carrying the load or the special all it puts more pressure on the defense i think our defense is good enough to keep us in games but you can't keep putting them back on the field because like like when you said all of a sudden you get a turnover you get a strip sack all of a sudden the defense like we just sat down and it's like ah but you gotta go. put pressure on the quarterback and I Wayne just, you gotta okay, get no, Trubisky okay. down because no, no, hold on, hold on, like, Burrow hold on. kept no, escaping got, no, and when he got, escapes no. open boom no no boom. I, got, I got one for you so I listened to these podcasts I listened to all these things and they were like oh they didn't they didn't uh they didn't uh pressure uh Lamar Jackson I said okay guess what Pressure Lamar Jackson. Go ahead and run the field. Guess what? He's going to run a 90-yard touchdown on you. So quarterbacks who are mobile, you can't, like, all the pass rushers can't just run up the field because he's gone. So certain quarterbacks, like, you saw Burrow get out of some things today. You got to, like, that dude can run. I, I, I went to Auburn. I watched that kid at LSU. You can't all of a sudden just go out full blitz because if you one tackle, he's gone. Like, that dude can roll. So I, I, I have confidence in the defense, but you have to play complimentary football, offense, defense, and special teams. Yeah, like I said, you got to take the pressure off the defense. Yeah, I know they're giving up a lot of points and some chunk plays, but you get a bust. Like, you know, he had that hit on Boyd. He didn't wrap him up, but a hit like that would normally take someone off their feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just an unfortunate play, you know, a busting cover. What happened, I'm curious, not, not to change the subject, to the, uh, we got a corner injury today. What was uh, the... Sure. You know, because we were, Wayne and I were down in the field, so we didn't get a chance. Well, it looked like yeah. it was a non-con, it happened before the contact. Well, Quincy Williams got hurt. And it was bad. Uh, the, the linebacker. The carted off? That was Quincy That's, Williams. All right, yeah, yeah, that didn't look good. But um, Ankle injury. Yeah. Right, so, Wayne, let me ask you this. So, when you see a missed tackle like that, and I was just at the, uh, I was at the Vikings Legends event last night, and it was like one of the uh, Hall of Famers uh, receivers. It was Amar Rashad. He was talking. But the thing about it is, like, nowadays you can't hit receivers. Like, when you play, like, you know, like, you got stuck. So now, like, defensive backs run up, and they realize, like, oh, if I hit him here, I'm going to get a penalty, or if I hit him here, like, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, so how do you, I, I mean, and this may be a question for you, like, how do you, if you're a yeah. defensive back, like, how do you hit guys? Because you can't, if you hit them, you're going to get fined and kicked yeah. out of the damn game. For the most part, they just take your legs out, especially with yeah. big tight ends and stuff. But you can't do that. You can't hit yep. below the knees. You can't hit above the neck. Yep. I mean, 
It's such a small range. I mean, especially if it was me. There's not a big <laughs> well, range between you, my neck you, and you, like, you'd have 90 yards after a kick. Yeah. yeah after so, the uh, and you yeah. can't speak. That's, that's what happened today. You can't lead with your helmet. Yep. You can't do helmet to helmet. So yep. it is unfortunate. Most guys would go down, but he made yeah. a great play. Yeah. yeah. And DJ Reed said after the game, interesting quote, we need to have a meeting as far as defense. It's unacceptable. Good. So, you know, Sauce Gardner is holding his end. Everyone else is not. And Jordan White has not been good. You know, he was a guy you paid big money to as a safety in the offseason, and he hasn't been good. And a lot of guys on the defense has, haven't been good. Quinton Williams, you know, the blow up that we saw on the sidelines, guys. He uh, saw the video. Yeah, he yeah, said yeah. Quinton Williams was yelling at the coaches to use a four man rush. So maybe there was some expletives exchange in there, but I guess no. they were using a three man. Should he used a four man? I don't know. This, oh, is, yeah. this is what happens when things aren't going good during a game like this where they're not getting home to the quarterback. Close. So. You know, it's nice to see that passion. You don't want to, like, you know, make the coaches look bad. Yeah, and they'll say all the right things after the game, yeah, yeah. you know, just call it in the heat of the moment. Yeah. But, yeah, they're feisty. They want to win, and that's what you want to hear from your players. Were you guys immediately after a game, like a game like this, were you emotional? Like, when you're talking to the media, do you got to put, like, a tight lip to make sure you don't say something? <laughs> or I'm sure there's weeks where you're like, F this, F that, and you probably hey. said something. As, well, you played a little bit before Twitter, and, and there was no social media. Twitter, but not really. But you know, it's funny. I never, uh, and I'm not, you know, whatever, but like my last year at Auburn, I was undefeated. Dallas Cowboys went to the NFC Championship game. Kansas City, we were third. Like, I never, like, I, one year, I think I've ever had, I only had one losing season ever. And so the games that, I mean, every game that I've ever played in, I'm always, I've never walked into a game and, like, oh, guess we're about to get rolled up today. I've never been on a team where I thought we were going to lose. So those kind of things, like we didn't, I mean, one time Derek Thomas blew up. That was the Monday night game when him and Shannon Sharp had that big thing on Monday night. But for the most part, I've never been on a team where, like, coaches and players, like, fall. I mean, we, we get after it. But in the day, it's like, I mean, I've just never been on, like, a, a team where it was just, like, so bad, where it was, like, toxic, where, like, oh, we got a problem. Like, today, that's bad. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, you imagine, like, Quinn's making, what, $30-something million dollars a year? Not that much. No, no, no. He's, he's still on his rookie contract. He's what, he making, like, like $5 million a year. Oh, well, he will make twenty. Yeah, he, he got made, a $20 million signing bonus. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He's making $20 million. He got $20 yeah. million. Well, all of a sudden, now you're calling out, you're calling out a coach? Who are they going to get rid of? You're going to get rid of him or are you going to get rid of the coach? I, mm -hmm. I mean, we. I mean, yeah, I, mean I know Wayne, Wayne would never do that. I mean, I've never yelled at a coach visibly where, you know, where the cameras can see. Yeah. But, yeah, finish this, what you're about to say. I'm, almost, I, I'm trying to hold on to it, hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Maybe, um, as I say, so you know, you get caught in the heat of the moment. It's like when we get in the locker room, we got 15 minutes window till the media comes in. I'm basically going to tell you everything you did wrong if you lost. You got 15 minutes to yeah. gather yourself, and you got to be on the bus in 45. It's a away yeah. game. That's, you know, that's tough. You got to I mean, you got to be a professional you want to go in there and just put the defense on blast or this coach on blast. So understand, people need to understand how hard it is after you just fought for three hours and then they're going to come in and point out all the negatives that you had in your, even if, even if you won, they're going to point, well, what happened on this? Why'd you drop that? So it's, it's tough to hold that in. And I could see why he reacted like that, but it is what it is, man. Your competitor, that's how you're going to be. Well, you know what's so funny is I'm, I'm sure how your parents were, but like I could have had like, you know, 100 yards rushing, five catches, whatever, one holding call. First thing my dad was, because this TV is magnified. My dad's like, son, you know, on TV they were talking about you got a five-yard holding call. I'm like, dad, what about the 100 yards I got? Yeah. But it's just one of those things, like, and like Wayne said, you don't, like, we leave the field, and all of a sudden we're, like, way up here. And all of a sudden, and then coach gives you to you, and, you know, coaches keep it 100. Before, when no one's in there, they'll tell you the things we did good, things we did bad, and all of a sudden, two seconds later, the door is open. We don't even get a chance to get undressed. No. We're like dang near naked, all stuff out, and the media comes in there, hits you right in your face, and you gotta be you gotta like be able to just come down and just try to figure out how to say the right thing. And if you you make one missed up, yeah, it, it'll follow you for the rest of your career. And listen, guys get emotional. You now Her Herman Edwards, you were on the Jets when he had the you play to win the game. Right. What is your reaction as a player after that when you see that? Oh, I mean, we loved Derm. We loved him. He's a motivator, you know, a great guy, you know, players coach. He played. He understands the game. But, yeah, that's how he was. He'd come up with quirky things like that. And uh, Does yeah. that pump you up? Because keeping the receipts is the thing now that they said pumped them up. Does that kind of thing get the well, locker room going? A coach wants to bet on his guys. He's going to bet on us to win the games. And 
You know, he's all in. Yeah, you want a coach like that's going to fight for you, not going to be like, oh, well, this and that. Yeah, you want a guy saying, we're going to win. We're going to remember this. We're going to remember everything you said, and we're going to shove it down your throat. And yeah. you want a coach like that. Or I did. I wanted coaches like that. And, and I, and I have, I have to say, yeah. I had one. And that was the biggest thing. Rex would say, See the goddamn take, snack. Well, Rex would say, if you take one of ours, we're going to take two of yours. And, like, but the thing about Rex, and I love Rex to death because it's like, Rex would come to me and he would say, hey, T, you know what? We got a big game this week. I'm gonna create, Rex would say, I'm going to create something to take the pressure off of Sanchez. We had a young quarterback. So he was like, you know what? Let me make it about me and Belichick and we're going to fight. Because all of a sudden, now the media is talking about this, and now Sanchez get a chance. Because if you put, oh, Sanchez versus Tom Brady. He, and Sanchez was not mature enough to be able to handle that. So Rex would just create all this like drama and start stuff. But that's the way... I saw how he, how he was protecting the players, and, like, I'll fight for Rex any day of the week, and that's the guy you want to go with. Well, Bill Parcells, what, <laughs> you laugh as soon as they say his name. What was he like, you know, in the locker room and talking to guys after the game and pumping you guys up? Because I imagine you want to talk about disciplinarian. He was one of those. Yeah, he, he was the kind of guy, I always tell the story, at Hofstra, it was just like a square of the building, and if you're walking and you see him, you kind of want to turn the other way. <laughs> The best thing, example is you could be walking and he sees you and he's like, you're down. He's like, listen, we'll get him. We'll keep plugging away. We're going to be all right. But if he saw you and you were smiling, like, what are you so happy about? What the <laughs> F are you so happy about? It's like, you didn't know how to be around yeah. him. So when, when he first came in, he told me that if I didn't listen to him, my career would go downhill faster than a dump truck with a cement parachute. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, that's what he told me. But if he didn't mess with you, yeah. he didn't like you. So if he didn't mess with you, yeah. you were in trouble. Well, so the more he messed with you, the better it was. Well, Wayne, that's a testament. My dad would always say, because my dad was a military man, Vietnam veteran, Purple Heart, and was a drill sergeant. So he would say, son, if I ever stop getting on you, that means that I'm, I gave yeah. up. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Like, my hardest coaches and my hardest critics, or my dad... If they don't, if my dad didn't razz me, if he didn't say, if I messed up and he didn't say nothing, I'm like, oh shoot, I'm in really trouble now. And that's those are the things I appreciate. I love to get, I love to get coached up hard and get and get razzed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, that's you know, it motivates you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But you can't, now this coach, I mean, that's a whole nother, that's yeah. a whole nother segment. Nowadays, you can't talk to these kids this way, because even the coaches that say like, we can't, not yet, you can't, because it's a, it's a, it's a different culture. I'm not just saying. Oh, the year, it's participation <laughs> ribbons. Well, the practices <laughs> are a lot lighter. Everybody gets a I wasn't, trophy. Come I wasn't on, gonna go there, but I, yeah. they didn't have that. Yeah. Participation yeah. Yeah. trophies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they yeah. say the lightest practices ever in a training camp. Now, I am not. You guys have like two a day. Once every third practice, they get, we were banging every day. Dude, if we I'm, didn't, if we didn't hit practice, I never would have made a team. Dude, dude, same thing. The so, underwear Olympics. Is that yeah, what you're gonna say? So listen, <laughs> no, I was at the Vikings thing last night, and one of the young, not young, he was like, he played in the '60s. He said they had they had six preseason games, six. And Sheesh. so for me, like I was an undrafted free agent, and if we didn't have preseason, there's no way. Because the only reason I made the roster was special teams. Because you can't, you can't make, you don't make the roster uh, catching the ball or running the ball. You make the you you. And Robert Griffin was talking about he was a safety, and he was saying like I knew. He said I was talking to Vincent Glenn, and he said there were 16 corners. He said, how, he said, Vincent, how many corners did y'all keep last year? He said, five, possibly six. And he was like, okay, so you're going to cut like 12. He was like, yeah. He said, I knew I had to do something different, whether if it was special teams and do this and this, because you can't make it. Like you, yeah. yeah. And if you, don't play, if you don't play in the preseason, how you going to, they can't figure you out because you don't hit in practice. You got no film, yeah. yeah. And a lot of guys hold out now in training camp. Did you guys ever wish you could just hold out all of What do you mean? August? Nobody holds out no more. Like, did you enjoy no. going there every day in August? I loved I mean, yeah. I kind of did. I, yeah. I liked the pain. Exactly. <laughs> I loved it. Because you got to imagine, like, we were two guys that we weren't first-round draft choices. Yeah. So, like, if you're a first-round draft choice, like, oh, you know you got, like, like me and Tony Gonzalez, like, one day we're going to actually write a book. I performed Tony's wedding. And so, Tony, we're going to do a book on the two Tonys. You're ordained minister? Yeah, I'm ordained. I did 11. I did Dustin Keller's wedding. Oh, yeah. that's, you, that's you right. Married, you, you told married. me this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, right. I can't get a text back. I'm not married. No. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's no. a single person yeah, phrase. Yeah. You can't get a text back. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's a Jewish thing. Yeah, no. yeah. I got, that's, that's I just a, a lot about That's a millennial yeah, gotta, thing no, or no, Gen Z no, thing. No, so crazy. It's like, uh, so you, I uh, forgot to listen to my train of thought. When you're like, uh, we were talking about. Uh, can't get a text back. Distract you. No, no. What? Dustin Keller, ordained minister. Yeah. Like being ordained and doing weddings and different things like that. 
Dude, I just lost my train of thought. When was I talking about? You were talking about how great a player I was. Yeah, I, yeah I, that I was exactly. Was <laughs> no, but uh, you're talking about practices. No, we 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 liked camp. we liked to paint a training camp. Exactly. Oh yeah, so and, I'm doing and, the and book, we liked the, the contact yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. So yeah, so Tony and I were going to do a book. We're going to do a book on the two Tonys. Uh, Tony and he was like one of my closest friends. Tony would get mad at the end of a game if they didn't throw in the ball. My mentality as an undrafted free agent, I'd be like. If they throw me the ball, I, I, have, I hope I catch it. You know what I mean? And that's, I don't know if that's if you ever felt like that because it's like, if you're a first round draft choice, you got more chances. Like, you can, you could F up for like six yeah. years and you always got more chances. If you're an undrafted free agent, you get one opportunity. So every time the ball came to me, my mentality was I had to catch it because if I didn't catch it, I'm going to get cut. Tony was like, every, every play, like, like Keyshawn, I needed the ball. I needed the ball. And so Tony and I were going to write a book, The Tale of Two Tonys. You know, a kid who grew up in California, first round draft choice, played at basketball in an undrafted free agent, and we both played 17 years, and we're gonna do a book called it. Well, I just and you know his uh, his ex girlfriend uh, Lauren Sanchez is Bezos, his new girlfriend. So we already got the Amazon book deal. So y'all been oh. on, so we got the book. It's, it's the two Tonys, and we already do it for a word. We already, but the thing about it, like if you're a first round draft choice, like you go to practice every day, like I better when you get the game plan, you like I better have 30 targets. And I'm like, I would look at the game plan. I'm like, shit, if I got three, and I got to make sure I catch all three. If I, if I miss one in practice, they're taking the play out. Right, right. You know how that it's goes. That's how it is. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you're an undrafted free agent, if you got a target and, and you missed the ball in practice, they're taking the play out. Do you guys get mad at those kind of players? Like when no. you had the big money guys who no. had the egos, like you had Keyshawn Johnson, you know, you had, I don't know. I had who, who was the big, on the Jets, who was a big big guy? Uh, I mean, I had Braylon Edwards and I had Darrell Revis. No, Re Revis, no. Revis wasn't like that. Revis was oh, okay. like, he was quiet. He was my roommate in training camp. Revis was quiet. He was about his business. He was about his technique. Does he that was, frustrate you, though? Like, guy like Keyshawn, a guy like Braylon? Well, like, I, well Bra I mean, Bray's my guy. But you, you, you got to have swag. Like, like, Wayne's quiet, but Wayne has swag. Like, Wayne was like, give me the fucking ball. Like, because you knew on third down, I'm going across the middle. I'm going to put my life out there. Throw me the ball because I'm going to catch it. And that's the swag you got to have as a wide receiver. Yeah, everybody's and, different. Yeah. yeah, everybody's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah everybody yeah. motivates themselves different. Yeah. And th that's just their thing. That's probably how they've done it their whole life. Oh, for sure. We just didn't do it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we yeah. didn't need to, like, talk about ourselves in the third no, person. Yeah. To, like, yeah. like throw, throw, the, throw, the, throw the ball to T. Rich. T. Yeah. Rich is going to Like, yeah, 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 and who yeah. are you then? If you're talking about T. Rich, who yeah. is T. Rich? Nah, we didn't have to do that because it's like, my thing is, I got, I felt confident. Like, Kobe was always like, I'm always going to kick the ball because I don't trust my teammates because I know how much work I'm in. I'm, my thing is, like, if they throw me the ball, I'm going to catch it. Because, But I'm not going to say it because I know how much time I put in and yeah. the work I put in because I'm going to catch it. Mm -hmm. But Kobe was like, I'm never passing the ball if there's two seconds on the yeah. clock. I'm going to show you. I'm going <laughs> to show, show you. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to yeah, yeah. yeah. show yeah, you. Yeah, show yeah, you. Yeah. And that's how we're built the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, before we go to Brian Gauss. Brian. Right. We want to thank you and American Dream for supporting us here. Yeah, thanks to House of Q. Out. Thanks to American yeah. Dream. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. everyone for coming out. Brian, how you doing? I never met you. How you doing? <laughs> Wayne Krebet, yeah. Tony Richardson. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Do the Jets beat the Steelers on Sunday? Wayne, go. Yeah. I think, uh, like Let's I said, go. I think going on the road is the best thing for him, getting Zach back, changing the game plan a little bit, and I think they come home with a win. I, I say yes. If the, if, no, if the game if the game plan is right, you got to play good defense because um, you got to stop the run because they're going to run the football. You'll get hit in the face. But put Zach in, 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 in good situations. Don't put him in like third and tens, third and twos, manageable situation, and we can win the game. Yes. Zach Wilson, come save the Jets. Thanks to Sergio on video. Thanks to House of Q. House of Q. Dream. Thanks we set up. Shout out to Cadillac. Busy your tri-state Cadillac dealers. Gotham City crew. Gang's all here. Jake Brown, T-Rich, Wayne Corbett. Signing out. <laughs>